up, everybody? I'm Tommy Sladak. This is Ashley Wenskowski, and we are the Orange Zone Podcast, your place for all things Syracuse Orange. We have a smaller crew today. Sam's on vacation, and Rachel's on vacation. July. It's July. <laughs> That's what happens. July. I was off last week. Yeah. Terrific. Terrific. And you just, you need it. Yeah. And with our schedule, August gets crazy, and from there, it's off to the races. So totally. you have to get it in now. You do. Before camp, before everything. Also, follow our new Twitter page, the yes. OZ po- at the OZ Pod. Mm-hmm. Finally got cracking on that. We're going to put our videos up every week, so definitely give that a follow. Yeah, and then we've been on TikTok and Instagram Reels, yeah. where we're going to be starting to pump those back in and really get those uh, platforms all moving and heading in one direction. But welcome in. We are continuing our position group preview, which we've been doing for a few weeks now. So we have tight ends and wide receivers is already out. Check it out on YouTube, Spotify, wherever you listen. We also also have quarterbacks that Ashley, Sam, and Rachel hit last week. Um, subscribe, like, comment. I got to remember to keep hitting that at the beginning of the show. Thank you for everyone that's done that, and thank you for everyone that's been on this ride with us. And if you're just joining us, welcome to the crew. We are getting into the defensive line, a position that Ashley and I are very excited about, one we've been talking about since the spring game. And this is a position that is needing some help compared to last year yeah and I think orange fans know that I think a lot of what I've seen on social media and stuff even with the McCord stuff everything has been what about the old line what about the D line what about the trenches somebody talk about the trenches so now we're going to talk about it let's get into the trenches so first let's get you with the big picture stuff it's one of the position groups that needed serious attention and under defensive coordinator Rocky Long who was in his first year with them they were seventh in run defense 13th in passing defense in the ACC and getting into the more national picture, 66th and total offense. And you have in parentheses because it was your note. Not very good. Not very good. <laughs> um, yeah, 13th best pass defense in the ACC. I don't think I even really knew that after mm-hmm. last year. That is not very good. But things are different this year. Rocky Long is no longer with us. Elijah Robinson, new defensive coordinator coming over from Texas A&M. Um, and he's going to shake things up. I think he wants this to be a faster, more aggressive defense. And... Um, you know, I think I think it's going to be exciting to see his vision and and what he brought to Texas A and M to bring it over here. And that the, one of the biggest things that you'll see on paper or even the first play of the game for Syracuse fans is they will not be in their three three five that we have been seeing for years under Rocky Long, Tony White, and very much in that Dino Babers era. And Robinson has said they're going to a four guy front. Which we were almost expecting. Yeah, no more three three five. Um, for as much as it was lauded, for as much as Rocky Long was the godfather of that, uh, you know, defensive scheme, it just frankly didn't work very well last year. Of course, there's other reasons for that, but um, yeah, so they're going to switch it up. Robinson, this was a good quote uh, that I found with him prior mm-hmm. to this year. He said, we want to bring this team down to two things, technique and effort. Our guys are going to buy into it. We're going to make sure that it's simple, where they can play fast, be in a down forefront, and get out there and do multiple things. We want to be an aggressive unit. We don't want to sit back and fish. We want to hunt. I love that. I know, that gets me fired up. That's great <laughs> stuff right there. And then you see, you know, his focus is fast and aggressive, and that's something that will be a very very common theme as we start to break down these players is they are big and they are fast yeah. and quite a number of them have track backgrounds, yes. which is very interesting. Yeah. Um, and again, games are won and lost in the trenches. It's as simple as that last year with the three, three, five, I think a part of it was it just, you, you felt like Syracuse wasn't getting those big, big dudes. Yeah. And the big, big dudes were going to the big schools. Totally. But those big, big dudes are coming to the Qs and they're here and they're ready to get things going. And there's one guy in particular that we we have to start with because I don't believe it's too much of an argument to say that outside of Kyle McCord, this is the biggest fish that Fran Brown hauled in in the transfer portal, and that is Fidel Diggs out of Texas A&M. Yeah, um, definitely the biggest defensive name uh, that he got in the portal this year. Um, he also was looking at Alabama around the same time, mm-hmm. so kind of really a haul for Fran Brown. Um, but yeah, he was a two-time captain at a and so this is a guy that's clearly a leader. He's older. We'll be representing them at ACC Media Day next week. Um, so this is a guy that's going to lead the defense and lead some of these. This position group, I think more than any other, um, 
has 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 had lost a lot of guys to the transfer portal has a lot of new guys coming in so less of those returning veterans which we'll get into who they lost but having a guy like Fadil I think is going to be a big difference maker absolutely and he comes from the Aggies who were fifth nationally as a team in tackles for a loss he had 36 tackles 11 for a loss and four sacks in 2023 also an important piece to the puzzle is his connection and desire to stay with new assistant coach in DC Elijah Robinson who was over at Texas A&M so in that he is a for sure a, a critical piece that we saw for a few guys that had connections to him to want to continue to play under him. So Robinson, we see from what we saw in spring practice, primarily working with the D-line outside of his bigger duties. And then the edge rusher coach will be Nick Williams, who comes over from working with Coach Prime at Colorado. Both of them just balls of energy, man. And it, it just you you understand why people and these young players are drawn to him. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Williams, I think, was one of the guys that impressed me most when we got to talk to all of the position coaches uh, during spring ball. He was just he was so serious, but you could tell that he really is excited to get in here and turn this position group around. So I thought he was one of the best position coaches that we met in spring ball, just in terms of um, giving us some insight into his into his vision. But as far as Diggs, I think what sticks out to me about him is he was able to give pressure to SEC quarterbacks in the pocket, and I think that that's what he's going to continue to do here. I think he's going to be a huge piece for Syracuse to stop the run this year, and I think stopping the run this year is going to be one of Syracuse's biggest focuses. I mean, teams are going to want to keep that SU offense off the field. They're going to want to keep McCord off the field. They're going to be whatever. So so stopping the run is going to be one of the most important things for this team this year. And that's a, a growing, tr not even a growing trend. It, it is just, it's, it's what it is with the best teams where, and Fran Brown, I believe, has talked about it. And so many of the very great coaches in college football always will say, we want you to know we're going to run the ball and we're still going to do it and we're going to succeed at it. The yeah. best teams are able to do that. So defensively, yes. you have to say, we need to answer that because no matter what, a team, if they can, is going to try to pull that off. Yeah. And Diggs is 6'5", 260. Yeah. Big dude. Got a chance to you know, speak with him in the spring and he is just... He is just a you know a brick you know bleep house you know just big <laughs> dude. He looks like an avatar, like in the nice. He looks like a person who you go up to and you're like that guy isn't real. Like he's yes. huge. Yeah, and and he's put in work in the strength and conditioning, and and a lot of these guys have. And taking a look from going back to the spring game again, you can't put all your all your eggs in one basket with this, but I do think you can pick up on some stuff from the spring game and how Fran organized the depth chart. And we saw that first string defense. The four guys that we saw out there were obviously Diggs. Then you also had Dion Tank Wilson, Elijah Fuentes Cundiff, and then Dennis Yaquez Jr. And, or, uh, Jaquez, excuse Jaquez. me. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the one where I've been all over the place, but I got you this year, Dennis. And one thing before we get into each one, Ash, is I'm looking at the sizes. Mm -hmm. We already know about Diggs. <laughs> Tank Wilson is 6'5", 300. Mm -hmm. Elijah's 6'4", 280. And Dennis is 6'4", 255. Yeah. Those are some sizes we didn't That's have big last guys. year. We or in the last few years. No. Um, just on a size front alone. You know, some of these guys, Tank coming over from New Mexico State, a um, couple guys coming over from JUCO. But regardless, these are sizes that Syracuse has not had on the defensive front. And it's evident watching that spring game, just the the size of these dudes, especially yeah. Tank. And he California native. He was at New Mexico last year. Before that was at Arizona. He played in 20 games over three years, but that New Mexico State game was definitely the the next hype for him. But from what I saw out there, he he brought a lot. He was a force, and he was just that type of player you could tell guys like Marlo Wax, Derek McDonald were enjoying being out there with him. Yeah. And then Fuentes Cundiff, he's one of those dudes as well as, you know, Jaquez, Jaquez, gosh darn it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Your brain doesn't like they've that word. Been, they've been here for a few years. And yeah. Elijah's Cardinal Hayes, Bronx, so many dudes come out of there. And then Dennis is Pensacola, in New Jersey. And yeah. I believe it was Dennis's dad on uh, Twitter X back when the transfer portal was happening, put out a few pictures of Dennis and Kyle McCord from when they were like 10 or 11. Yes. So he's very much a part of that South Jersey mix. And certainly the coaches feel that he's going to have some bigger roles here. And this second string D line, 
some names we know, some we truly don't. Yeah. Because there was one true freshman yeah. that was getting some time. You want to talk about him? Yeah, Murad. Murad, I think. Yes. Watson. Uh, true freshman. He picked Syracuse over Tennessee. He's an Irvington, New Jersey native, so fits in that Jersey realm. 6'3", Shocker. 285, so fits the size bill, too. Um, he has second team All-State in New Jersey, um, ranked the 24th best player in the state by 24-7 sports, but he got a lot of time in the spring game. And I think... You know, those things, as we've discussed so many times, are not really given out lightly by Fran Brown or by Elijah Robinson. So I think the fact that he impressed enough in spring ball to really see himself out there in the spring game was has to be a good sign. And again, it's just one game. It's one night. It's in the spring. But one guy that was out there very quickly with that white team, so what looked to be the second string um, at the start of that game, was David Omaperiola, who is listed as a linebacker. He was lined up at edge. That's something that we see in college football and the pros, just depending on those guys that, you know, they can, they're big enough that they can, you know, bounce around in the trenches, but they're also probably there with the intention that they could be dropping back in cover. All about the probably confusion in defensive schemes. Chase Simmons, who's been here for a few few years appeared in 10 games last year before having his season cut to due to injuries so he's someone that they're starting to build some trust in and then Rashard Perry um so a little context here <laughs> there's there's like a tornado warning going on oh yeah we're filming and we can during just, and we can just hear it outside the building yeah if you can hear like a little yeah, that's the roof. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, it probably won't pick up, but it we're just fine. I I just I know for central new yorkers and others it's just It's been a hot summer, man. A hot Hot summer, summer. and the last week or so, if you live here in the central New York area, it's been like a tornado warning every day. Yeah. So, sucks. Life. The weather gets better. But let's keep going with the defensive line. Yeah. The other on there that we saw, Rashard Perry, um, Bennett High School, Buffalo. He's someone that we see our local central New York Syracuse teams face normally in regionals. That's a big powerhouse out there in western New York. So, he was also very much in the mix and the other dudes in the mix from early in the game he he might be your your early preseason <laughs> favorite on the team yeah KJE. maybe i think we have to talk about kje uh <laughs> kje that's what we're gonna call him King yeah. joseph edwards um i think he was the recruit the high school recruit that really brought fran brown into the spotlight this year or this winter i should say it was kind of like we were going along fran brown was hired we were getting these recruits some things were building And then he got King Joseph Edwards. And I remember sitting there watching his commitment video, trying to get a screen recording for our (laughs) our sports cast. And um, seeing him pick Syracuse, I think, was the big moment that showed a lot of Syracuse fans, all right, we're going to be competitive for these kids that are four stars, that are getting looks from a lot of other really good schools. Um, He mentioned at the time that Nick Williams coming over from Colorado was essentially the reason why he chose Syracuse. So I think that's important that he values that relationship with Nick Williams. And yeah, I mean, he's young, 6'4", 230, um, but he's definitely fast. He actually grew up training as a tight end, which right. is something interesting um, about him. So he kind of has a lot of a lot more mobility than you would expect from some of these other guys. But um, I think he has some growing to do. I think as a freshman, he'll learn under digs, and I don't know if he'll really see any if, if much time this year. But if he does, you know, I think, I think this is a guy that's going to be on Syracuse fans' radar for years to come here. I completely agree with that. And I think a part of that process is just beefing him up a little yeah. bit more. And even, but even then, you know, you could tell that he is a smaller edge in that spring game. Obviously, you're reclassifying from high school. He still technically should have been in high school and he's going with, right. you know, what, you know, become grown men in the few years after school. But he was still in the mix. And it said a lot to me to see him come in as early as he did and get reps with the first string team, that blue team. So he's exciting. He was incredibly active on social media. Media. Yeah. He's very good at already knowing how to build his brand. He has very smart people in his corner. And he's someone I think is going to continue to be a name. But that was that watch party, I think you and I were tuned oh, the in watch party. separately from home <laughs> for like over an hour. And if it was if I'm not mistaken, screen. Syracuse, Colorado, Colorado, Florida State. Does that sound right? Maybe. Yeah. I think. But still, that was that was a huge that was a huge moment. That Um, was a huge moment. Yeah, a huge moment, kind of like the huge high school moment of the winter. So very excited to see King Joseph. um, If nothing else, you know, kind of learn and train and grow and develop this year. I think he's a guy that in the future could really be a dangerous pass rusher. So we'll see if you know what he looks like this this fall. Two other guys to watch, and both of them are transfers from Alabama. You have Braylon Ingram, yep. who I think will be getting in the mix, as well as a newcomer, and that is Isaiah Hastings. Yeah. So, and Hastings earning a single digit, which we know is you got to be, you got to be a baller. Yeah. And that's a number that you have to earn. 
And that said a lot to me that he was able to come in and get that right away. Yeah, Hastings comes over from Alabama. Uh, he's actually a Toronto native, so he gets a little closer to home there you here. Go. Love that. He was a four star out of high school. Um, he played in one game, made one tackle for Alabama in 2022. Redshirted, didn't play in 2023. So while he didn't really see the field at Alabama, I, no matter how you slice it, the kid played for Nick Saban. He got to learn with that program. Um, transferred to Syracuse this January, and I think he's he's definitely a guy that. Um, could replace some of the size lost, which we can get into. Right. And something that if that you probably were guessing is defensive line is an interesting position because you don't really go out there and be like, this is your set quarterback. This yeah. is your set first and second running back that I think we're going to be seeing with Willis and LaQuinn Allen. Yeah. D-line, it's moving and shaking, baby. Right. Like third downs, guys, new guys are coming in. So really what we're what we're trying to do is give you maybe the 10 to 12 names we think are really going to be a part of that prime mix. Is there going to be a new name that flashes in that season that we yeah. maybe not don't talk about? Probably. Probably. I can almost guarantee <laughs> it. Is there going to be some names that don't get as much playing time as how much we're talking about them? Probably. Yeah. But this is the fun part, yeah. is we're trying to figure that out, and we're going to know more come August and obviously September. Um, outside of the outside of the two we just talked about, Kevin Jobity could be D tackle, could be edge. He's a Buffalo native. I think he'll be in the mix. And then um, who else was on here that we were wanting to talk about? Uh, um, the name that I can't say, <laughs> Michael. Which one? Michael. No, no, Michael. Oh, hold on. Yeah. I wrote it down. Okay. You have the you have the phonetics the the real pronunciation. I believe it's Michael Nakoka. Okay. I believe it's Michael Nakoka. He spent two seasons at Tyler Junior College. I love JUCO products. I, know. I love dudes that for one reason or another they had to go and earn their way up because I think they come in with so much hustle totally. and so much intensity of being like appreciative of the moment. Yeah. And he seems like one of those dudes. Four star prospect by on three. He was twelfth nationally, third at defensive tackle with thirty two tackles, four point five sacks. Dallas native had offers from Georgia, Mississippi State, Arizona State, uh, and shocker, he's six five two ninety. So Shocking. yeah, <laughs> big dude brings a lot. So I'm excited about this guy. Yeah, we're talking about all the you know pieces that they've brought in and all the transfers and whatnot. But I want to take a minute to talk about the guys coming back. Right? You said yeah. Jobody. You're just talking about him. Jacques, Fuentes, Condef, and Braylon Ingraham. Ingraham, I think. Um, those four were responsible for 66 tackles last year and over half of the D-line turnovers and quarterback hurries. So with some increased playing time this year, it'll be interesting to see how those four can kind of keep that production up or, or elevate it when they are seeing the field more in the absence of some losses. So Syracuse loses Terry Lockett. He transferred to JMU. Caleb Okachukwu graduated, ran out of eligibility, and Kevon Darton uh, went over to Arizona to reunite with Dino Babers. So those are three names I feel like people were pretty familiar with defensively last year, Lockett, Okachukwu, and Darton, and those three are no longer. Um, but as we've mentioned, I think I think the size has been replaced at the position yeah. and, and not even replaced but improved upon. I think experience is maybe where this new group hits a hitch. Definitely. And I think that's going to be a part of the recipe for success for so many teams moving forward is yeah. getting the, the digs. Yeah. Can you land – guys like that right. that are coming in with experience and they're ready to go and then outside of those three or no there's one more name i wanted to hit on because i'm not I'm, if i'm not mistaken i believe you interviewed him right after he committed caden brown true freshman uh yes true freshman son of former syracuse linebacker albin brown i believe um who's very active on twitter and always interacting with our stuff so albin nice. uh thanks for that what's up um anyways caden his son was a three-star 215 pounds so he's kind of undersized right now but he'll grow like we said about king joseph um definitely adds some speed and some depth and and one of those big he was i believe the top recruit in New York coming out of high school for that class, or if not the top, one of the top few, uh, maybe five or something. So um, definitely a big get and and kind of a depth piece, I would say as well. And we'll we'll definitely see him and King Joseph, you know, grow along here as the as the seasons go by. Super excited. And a lot of the times when we go to August camp, it's broken up into position groups before some stuff as a unit. But going to position groups and looking at who you're excited to watch, one of the biggest things is not just seeing these players but getting to watch again Nick Williams and Elijah Robinson work it's you can just you can 
you can tell they're yeah. they're good at what they do, and I'm I'm excited to see what they're able to build in such a short amount of time, and I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah. But big picture, what's your expectation? Are you are you hoping that these guys are top five in pass defense, run defense? What are you thinking for what the D line's able to? I don't know what our expectation should be necessarily because like I said this is kind of a melting pot this is kind of a lot of new faces being thrown together with a couple of those returners sprinkled in you got Diggs who's going to headline the group and then you kind of got everyone else um I think that I think that it should be improved, right? Elijah Robinson is such a mind, like we've talked about. At the same time, I would say if we're taking a look at Syracuse football, yeah. which is exactly what we're doing, position group by position group, this is probably one of the groups I'm more concerned about in terms of just experience. Like I mentioned, a lot of, I mean, we're seeing some freshmen get some time, a lot of guys who hadn't really seen a ton of playing time over the years because of kind of some of those strongholds with Okuchuku and Darton and whatnot. So um, hopefully they can put it all together because like I said before, it's certainly one of the most underrated but most important parts of this team this year stop in that run game absolutely and I think it only makes sense for to already say that what we're getting into next week I think it's we have to go O line I it think, makes sense we're yeah. hitting D line we're going to O line and you talked about coming together and working as a team and offensive line that's an even bigger deal and there's yeah. a bunch of new faces on that side and as we talked about the games they're one in the trenches you can have yeah. The position pieces, you can have the receivers, you can have the running backs, you can have the quarterback. But if you're not winning in there, the game is quite literally getting pushed down the field one way or the other. Yeah, and I think this coaching staff knows that. Not that the Babers regime didn't, of course they did, but I just think from Fran Brown and Elijah Robinson and how close that those two are, we've heard so much just in our few interactions with them so far. Like these games are one in the trenches. That's our really big focus. Um, so I think that renewed attention to this area is definitely something that's going to be refreshing. Everybody's always talking about, like you said, O line, got to protect McCord. Of course, yes, very important. But the D line too. I mean, if a team just runs runs you over all game long, that's not good either. So nope. All right, that's it. Storm sounds. <laughs> Storms. I can't tell if that's like people. If that's like <laughs> Brian behind the wall, or if it's a storm. Probably the storm. But anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure you check out our new Twitter page at the OZ Pod. Yes. And we will begin to keep building that offensive line next week. And this is going to take us a transition right into camp, which I'm so excited for. Yep. Got to get to running backs at some point, too, with uh, Mungro. Exactly. Ashley Winskowski, Tommy Sladak. We're out of here. Peace.